What's going on, everyone? I'm Travis Brown with the Eagle, along with Stefan Kreischek of the uh, Clarion Ledger. He covers Mississippi State. That's who Texas A&M plays this week in Kyle Field. Stefan, what's going on, man? Not much, man. I'm excited to get back to, to Texas A&M and College Station. I haven't been there since uh, the last football game in 21. Obviously, a, a great environment, a cool stadium, and uh, real excited to get back there and cover another game. Sure thing. Well, let's start off with the same way we start off all of these, and that's how, what is the biggest storylines for Mississippi State heading into this game? Uh, the quarterback position, no doubt, and I'm sure I'm sure uh, Texas A&M is probably in a similar spot too, with you know with Will Rogers and and his injury and and what his availability looks like on Saturday. Um, you know, Zach Harnett in his press conference on Monday, you know, made some hints that you know Rogers making some progress and and potentially being available for this game. If he's not, what does the quarterback position look like for Mississippi State? Last three weeks without Rodgers, it's been Mike Wright. Obviously hasn't, you know, played that well. And, and you know, they went one and two in that stretch. And he ended up getting benched late in that game against Kentucky in favor of, you know, freshman Chris Parson, a true freshman coming in and getting a chance to play. If Rodgers isn't able to go, you know, you probably see Parson play again on Saturday. You probably see some kind of a two quarterback system. Even if Rodgers does play, you probably see a two quarterback system because, they have packages in place for Mike Bryan and the way he uses his feet and the things he can do at the quarterback position. Um, but specifically, if it is Parson, you're not necessarily going to see Wright as the starter um, like you did against Arkansas and Auburn, where you know he plays the full game. You're probably going to see uh, some combination of, of usage of Parson and and uh, and Wright. But if you're Mississippi State going into an environment like this against a team like A and M that's going to be hungry for a win, and and you're Mississippi State and you're two wins away from you know getting to bowl eligibility with a tough schedule. Um, you really like to have your senior quarterback back, a guy who's proven that he can go into an environment like AM and win. Um, that's definitely the biggest storyline is where is Will Rogers uh, and how far has he progressed since his injury against uh, Western Michigan on October 7th? Sure. What, how, how has the offense been for those who haven't watched Mississippi State with uh, Parsons and Wright? And, <laughs> and what do they bring to the table or what deficiencies has, has the offense have had uh, in, in those games? Yeah, I think in, in those who remember right, you know, from his days at Vanderbilt, he runs the ball really well, right? He, he's a quarterback that is really explosive and can make plays happen with his legs. And he's got a strong arm. It's really just the accuracy that's been off. And, and that's been the case, um, you know, through the three starts that he has. The, you know, the, the passing attack just isn't where it was uh, under Rodgers uh, with Mike Wright starting in there. And there's obvious deficiencies and, and limits to what that offense can do. I mean, they win a game at Arkansas by only scoring seven points. They go to Auburn, they only score 13. They come back and only score three against Kentucky. So those numbers, you know, speak for themselves uh, on what the offense looked like under Mike Wright. You know, Chris Parson, case is still out, right? A really talented uh, freshman, a composite four-star, um, kind of out of the Nashville area there. It was a huge piece for, you know, what, what was really Mike Leach's recruiting class, right? And, and he's a guy that... Uh, Mike Leach thought really highly of um, a guy could do that can do both things as you know a great arm great arm talent and accuracy but also uh, can escape the pocket a bit better than maybe you've seen Will Rogers the past couple of years so there was a lot of folks that were excited about seeing you know what he looks like at Mississippi State just didn't necessarily expect him to be you know this big of a piece this year right he was you know he, he can still redshirt but that was kind of the plan from from the start was to redshirt him and and ideally not play him unless you're playing him in some garbage time against you know a, a non-conference opponent and they're at a point now where, you know, he's obviously been forced to play. And, and if Will Rogers can't go, he's going to have to play again and, and you know, kind of be thrown into the fire a bit. Um, but but the talent is there for him, right? It's just a matter of, you know, can he get comfortable in this offense? Can he get confident playing in a road environment like that? That's something that, you know, the experience this year will probably help him in the future, um, you know, as a sophomore, junior and whatnot. Um, but right now there's there's just too many questions to, you know, feel confident about what he can do just because he's a true freshman. We haven't seen it yet. It, it seems like forever ago, but this was the offseason that college football lost Mike Leach. And of course, yeah. so did Mississippi State football for AM fans who knew a lot about that story because of how always tied in Mike Leach was with the state of Texas. And, and <laughs> he always had something to say going into this matchup. <laughs> right, right. Always something about Kyle Fielder, the military school that AM was. Uh, mm -hmm. How is this program different? How is the, the school different uh, having moved on from? from Mike Leach. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is you don't have a presence as a head football coach of someone who's been there, done that before. Right. Like he came in year one at Mississippi state. He came in in 2020. So he didn't really have much of an off season to kind of implement what he wanted to implement because of COVID and they struggled that first year, but you knew based on his track record uh, at Texas tech at Washington state, 
that over time, once he got his players in, once he got his system implemented, the teams would have success. And you saw that in 2021 and 22 with them, right? Mississippi State kept taking steps forward, winning more games, you know, beating teams like Arkansas and Texas A&M, you know, pr- pretty frequently, or not frequently, but, you know, in those consecutive years there, um, you saw steps of that success. And now you're kind of at a point where you're restarting with a coach who's not been in those shoes before. First time head coach is Zach Garnett. You really don't know what the identity of the program is at this point. We don't really know what this offense is trying to do at times. The defense has holes that, you know, we, we didn't expect coming into this year with how many players they're returning. There's just so many questions that when you have a head coach who's been there and done that before, it's, it's easy to answer, right? Cause he's been in those spots before Zach Garnett hasn't been in a situation like this before where, you know, a team is struggling early on. He's got to help them, you know, be the head coach that, that kind of turns a corner mid season. And that's definitely the biggest thing. You don't have that presence of a guy who's been in those shoes before. And that's kind of where the questions start to loom for Zach Garnett this off season of, you know, if you're an outsider looking at this, you're saying, all right, like first time head coach, you know, young head coach, it's his first season, you know, you give him a chance next year. Right. But, you know, there's a lot of people around Starkville that are looking at the saying, well, Zach Garnett's not proven that, you know, from year one to year two, his teams can make a jump because he's never been in this spot before. Can Mississippi State afford to take that risk to wait to see what he can do when you look at the conference next year and, and what you're adding in Oklahoma and Texas and, and the veterans that this team is going to lose? There's It's a lot of change going on from, from this year to next year. Is Zach Garnett the guy you trust to do that? So that's definitely the biggest thing. You, you don't have a guy who's, you know, been coaching at this level before, um, to kind of give you that program identity right now. And, and I think that's what's been lacking, um, you know, at least these last couple of months during the season. I know there's instances when programs aren't performing like they want to. a and is an example of that, where the fan base isn't necessarily happy and, and are, are uh, voicing their opinions on any outlet they can. It's a very unique situation that Mississippi State is in this year with a head coach passing while – in in office per se um what is the how is the fan base grappling with this season because it's a extremely unique one yeah it i mean there's definitely some frustrations right and i think for the most part fans look back on you know december when leach passed and and they decided to promote our net as it it was still the right move right i mean you you were in an impossible spot right A, a spot that you know, programs are never put into uh, of having, you know, while you're getting ready for bowl preps and, and you're 10 days away from the opening of the early signing period and you're confident about the direction of your program to have something like that happen, Mississippi State, and keep in mind, they also didn't have a permanent athletic director hired because John Cohen had left for Auburn, that an interim athletic director with head football coach that just passed away about 10 days before the opening of the early signing period. That That's an impossible situation. The only thing Mississippi State could do there was promote Zach as much of the staff together as they can try to keep as many players in places they have. And they succeeded in doing that, right? They, they secured the signing class. They got back guys like Will Rogers and Nathaniel Watson and, and Jet Johnson. They were able to retain everything. So you look back on December, they did the right thing. Right. And I don't think that's what fans are upset about, but the product on the field just hasn't been in right. The Like I said earlier, the offense and defense, frankly, special teams too. There's just so many questions, things that you're watching. You're just like, how, how does this happen for an SEC school that won nine games last year where where did this drop off happen at some point you pin it back on the coaching staff and they have to take the blame for that and I think that's where most of the fans are right now is they don't know where to put their blame who how, how does this happen from a team that looks so good last year got so many players back to have this drop off the, the blame goes to the coaches and that's where you kind of have your doubts about what Zach Arnett can do as a head coach because he, he's proven as a defensive coordinator and frankly if Mississippi State moves on from him, he's going to get a decent head, uh, defensive coordinator job if not you know a, a smaller head coaching job I'm sure um, but but that's the thing is you just don't have a guy who, who's you know proven that to, to give fans confidence um, to move on from this year. And at the same time, too, this was supposed to be and as good as last year was this was supposed to be a big year for Mississippi State, because when you look at what state you know does in terms of their competition, the SEC, they don't recruit at a level to be an LSU and Alabama, Georgia to, to win every year. Right. But if they can keep players in place and hold players from transferring, they're a program that it kind of comes in cycles where you have, you know, a, a young class you believe in, they grow. And, and that's what it was in 2020. You know, you had Will Rogers and some young players. They knew if they stayed at Mississippi State and they grew, you get that over time. Now you're at that point of the cycle where this year was supposed to be where a lot of those veteran players are back and they've proven they could win before. You take that next step and you compete, you know, for a, a New Year's Six or, or to stay in the top 25 as they did last year. Um, you're just not getting that. And I think that's where state fans are looking at this saying, you you know, if you're going to lose a ton of players and rely on some young players these next couple of years, it could be a tough 
next couple seasons too. How, how do you, you know, it's tough to think about that when you're also having a bad season this year. Right. And that's, I think the big thing for me right now is this was supposed to be that year in the cycle where Mississippi state, you know, really delivered and they haven't. And now you're in a tough spot with all the changes coming into the conference of where do you go from here moving forward? Sure. Uh, real quick, focusing back on uh, Mississippi state's defense heading into this game. Anytime, yeah, I was watching Mississippi State defense. It always is about that defensive front and and the, the big guys up front. What's the hallmarks of of this defense, and especially against an AM offense that has been inconsistent at best through the season, and maybe some question marks about who's going to be available for quarterback as well. Yeah, I mean, this defense at the start of the year was pretty rough, and now it's kind of become a bit inconsistent, which is, I guess, better than where they were. But they had a good outing against you know Arkansas to the point where Arkansas fired Danny Enos the next day. They come back, they have a really bad first half against Auburn, but really good second half, and that's a bad Auburn offense. And then, you know, all things considered, they played pretty well against Kentucky. You know, they gave 24-3 to was the final. There was a pick six in there, so only gave up 17 points. They played well you know, against that Kentucky team. So I, I think it's a defense that's starting to get better as the season has progressed. Um, And it, and it really starts, you know, with, with the linebackers. And and it's it's funny because, like you mentioned, defensive line is what – I mean, you look at Jeffrey Simmons, Chris Jones, you guys like that that have come through the, the program. Uh, Chicago Bears legend Montez Sweat, I got a name. Um, they, They've had guys that have come through and, and had – they just haven't had that at the defensive line this year. And, and they've had to rely a lot on their linebackers to, to bring – you know, design pressure. And, and Nathaniel Watson, I think, as of right now, leads the SEC in sacks. He's a guy that's delivered. Jet Johnson, you know, is going to be, a, if not number one, the number two in tackles every year in the SEC the, the past couple of years, as well as this year. So they know what they got at linebacker. And that's kind of been the core of this defense, no doubt, because without those linebackers, they're not getting a lot of pressure up front with, you know, just the, the players lined up along the defensive line. And in the secondary, you know, they lose four of the five starters that they were trying to replace. So this defense goes as Jet Johnson and Nathaniel Watson go, um, when they've been on, this defense has been really good, um, but they can't do everything. And that's, I think, where the biggest question is right now is is who can help, who can step up, whether it be on the defensive line and the secondary to provide some consistency and help those linebackers, um, you know, kind of shore up the defense a bit. Sure. So, I mean, I know giving a prediction has never bit you in, in the butt. It's never bit me one. We'll, we'll just say that, though. So, you know, what is some of the uh, key things you're looking for in the game that if they happen, Mississippi State's going to have success on Saturday? Uh, the number one thing has to be Mississippi State's offense coming out to a strong start. Whoever's at quarterback, they, they, they have to show some kind of explosiveness, explosiveness in the passing game and probably do so early to keep this Texas A&M defense on its heels because this A&M defense is legit, especially up front. And you can't just assume that you're going to run the ball all over them, right? That And state's been a good running team, um, but they don't, don't have that complimentary passing game right now. So they, they got to make some shots down the field, uh, get the receivers involved a bit to, to, you know, give some stress to this A&M defense and maybe, you know, try to get the crowd out of it a little bit early on. And then defensively, the biggest thing is getting pressure, right? Whoever's in that quarterback for A&M, uh, whether it be, you know, design blitzes or, you know, corners coming off or, or even just the guys, you know, with their, with their hand on the ground, they, they got to make some plays uh, in the backfield there and, and get to the quarterback. Cause if, if they don't do that, um, th- there's not enough trust in the secondary right now to think that, you know, Mississippi state can slow down A&M from what they did, you know, last week against Ole Miss. Yeah. Texas A&M quarterbacks for the last three years have been gluttons for punishment. So always a chance to maybe get a shot in on a quarterback here and there when, uh, when you come play A&M, Hey, yeah. thanks so much. Uh, before you go, let uh, can you let some people know where to find you on on uh, the social medias and where to find your work leading up to the game this weekend? Yeah, on Twitter, I'm at S-K-R-A-J-I-S-N-I-K-3. And all our work is at clearingledger.com. We cover Mississippi State, Ole Miss. Uh, I keep up with all our coverage there. Uh, and thanks for having me on, man. I'm excited to, like I said, I'm excited to get back to Kyle Field to cover this game. It's been a, a weird rivalry in the SEC. There's been some good games com- to come from this. And, and oddly enough, you know, Mississippi State's had some success. So we'll see if uh, if that turns a bit and if A&M can, can you know, I mean, they're pretty big favorites. So if, if, if it's not this year, then I don't know what it'll be. <laughs> yeah, you make a good point. Mississippi State always is a lot of times where like A&M season goes to die. You yeah. know, you go back to 2016 and Trevor Knight getting hurt a week after right. they're in the college football playoff top four. You had – uh, Max Johnson b- b- breaking his hand last year. It, it always something always goes a little wonky when these yeah. two teams get together. So uh, you know, hopefully on the injury front, that that doesn't h- hurt anyone on either side. But 
it, there's always lots of storylines that come out of this game. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it should be a sure. fun one, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. There you go. Well, hey, thanks so much for joining us. Eric, thanks everybody for watching. If you're watching on uh, theeagle.com or if you're listening on the My Aggie Nation podcast, thank you so much. We'll be back again next week.